so again, our objective for today is to still discuss domain and range. We're going to be focusing mainly on these continuous functions today. So highlight the word continuous. Does anyone remember what continuous means? Yeah, thank you for responding. So it was, it's when the lines are connected or the dots have a line through them. That's a continuous graph. We're going to be focusing on those because those are the ones we see more often in this class and going on in your math career is the continuous functions. Uh, quick vocabulary review. This blank right here says the blank is the set of all input values. What goes in that blank? Domain. Domain. Thank you. So domain is the set of all input values or we highlight x values of a relation or function. The domain is always read from blank to blank. How is it read? Uh, left to right. Left to right. Thanks, Dolor. Dolor reminds us that that is from left to right. The next blank, reviewing of vocabulary, says the blank is the set of all output values. What goes there? Range. The range is the set of all output values, thank you, which means that those are my Y values, just like we did on the warm-up. The range is always read from blank. Bottom, bottom, top. bottom to top. It's lowest to highest looking at our heights, bottom to top on a graph. And then today, again, we've kind of already defined this. A relation or function has what's called continuous domain and range if its values are unbroken or connected over a part of a graph. We have talked about domain for graphs that have endpoints. Okay, so the first day we did domain and range, we talked about graphs that looked like, um, oops, that looked like this, right? just like on our warm-up, it had two endpoints. Last class, you guys talked about uh, the graphs that had one endpoint that looked like little rays. Today, we're gonna be talking about graphs that have no endpoint. So you see how these graphs are gonna have arrows on both sides of their line? That's no endpoints. It changes the way that we talk about domain and range, but honestly, it makes it easier in my opinion, okay? Put your pencils down, I just want you to watch for a second. This first one, is just a regular straight line. Do you agree? What do you notice is on the left side of this line over here? An arrow. What's on the right side? Arrow. arrow to arrow. An arrow means it's going to keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. What number is it actually heading towards? Infinity. Infinity. If we go to the left, that means we're actually headed to negative infinity. And on the right is to infinity. If I look at this from bottom to top, that arrow is still going down. What number is that arrow headed towards? the biggest small number we can think of, which is negative infinity. And that arrow is going upwards. What number is it going towards? Infinity. Positive infinity, the biggest number we can't count. So if we have a line that extends everywhere, literally everywhere, it doesn't have any stopping points, we would say that the domain is the phrase all real numbers because it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's literally all of the numbers that exist in the world. So it's all real numbers. And the range, since this line is extending to the bottom and to the top, we would also say that its range is all the real numbers. There's no place where it stops. So it's all of them. You don't have to make me a list of from negative infinity to infinity because you can't count to infinity. It's not a thing. Well, you can, you just never reach it. So we just say all of them, all real numbers. Now there's a symbol for all real numbers in mathematics. And since I'm a mathematician at heart, which means I'm lazy, mathematicians create symbols to speak for words because we don't, wanna, we don't wanna write words down. So you will see me write this symbol a lot. It looks like an R with an extra line through it. That symbol means all real numbers. Feel free to use that symbol as well if you're like me and want to use symbols instead of words. But on tests, it will say the phrase all real numbers. So you can use the shortcut if you want. I think it's a fun and funky symbol. Um, go ahead and pick up your pencils. If you want to annotate something, if you haven't done that already, go ahead. Okay, let's look at the second example here. Does this graph, this is called a parabola. You don't have to know that just yet, but it's called a parabola. It looks like a U, right? What do you notice is on the left side? Uh, arrow. An arrow. What's on the right side? An arrow, which means if we're going to the left, we're going to keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going all the way to what number? negative infinity. And if we go to the right following that arrow on, it would go to what number? Positive infinity. 
Okay, so our domain, since I never stopped, I went from negative infinity to positive infinity. We would still use that phrase, all real numbers. But look at the range here. The range is not the phrase, all real numbers. Why? Doesn't it have an ending point? It has like a lowest value, right? Yeah, yeah right here. Isn't that the lowest it goes? Yeah. What's the y value there? Negative three. three. And you would say everything is above negative three, right? Yeah. Above is the word greater than, so the range here is everything greater than negative three. We'd be going from negative three on and 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 on to positive infinity. So everything bigger than negative three. Wait, how did you get this one? This, this one? Uh -huh. um, so that symbol is greater than. I'm just going to put GT for greater than. Where are things greater, above or below? Above. So would you say that all of the things I colored in on the Y number line are above negative 3? So I picked the greater than symbol. If I had everything below it, what would that symbol be? It wouldn't be greater than. It would be less than or equal to. Cool. Fantastic work. Okay, I want you guys, with your partner, to work through. The answer's already there for you on this third one. But the kind of the way that I talked through it just now with the lefts and rights, the bottoms and the tops, I want you to talk through this parabola with your partner. I'm gonna give you some time here. So the answer is there for you. I wanna make sure it makes sense to you. Okay, the person who's talking first is partner A. I want you to talk about the domain. Partner B, you're talking about the range. I heard some very good explanations around the room. Thank you. Um, for the domain, I heard some people say, okay, well, since there's arrows extending on the left and the right, that means the graph's going to go from negative infinity uh, to positive infinity. If I get negative infinity and positive infinity, that's the phrase all real numbers. So the graph never stopped, basically. But if we're looking at the range, it has a highest point. That highest point that this graph goes to is at 4. And everything that this graph is showing me is below 4. So we'd use the math sentence, everything less than or equal to 4. <laughs> I told you and you didn't listen, lol. Okay, let's try some practice problems together. I'm going to do one with you, and then you and your partner are going to take care of the other two. So let's do this one. We're answering domain and range. Domains are my x's, so I look side to side. Since I noticed that this parabola, the curve, has arrows extending to the left and to the right, that means that the graph is going from negative infinity to infinity. But I don't put negative infinity to infinity in inequalities or anything. How do I say that? What's the phrase? All numbers greater than all real numbers. All real numbers. That's the domain here, or you can use that fun symbol for all real numbers, whichever, whichever one you want. That's it for the domain. This graph is extending all the way to the left and all the way to the right, so its domain is all real numbers. But question, is this graph extending everywhere from bottom to top? No. 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 Does it have a bottom or does it have a top? It has a top. It's called bounded above, just bonus vocabulary for you, and it's bounded at the y value of 1. Is the whole graph above 1 or below 1? Below. It's all of these numbers on this y number line, so we would say the graph all real numbers that are less than or equal to 1. That's it. We're describing where this graph shows up still, and it shows up everywhere that's less than 1 on the y-axis. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. You have a partner, and we're going to switch it up for a second. Partner B, you're going to do this first one. And partner A, you're going to do the second one. So how that is going to work is partner B, you're going to have your pencil and your explanation ready. And you're going to talk your other partner through it. Partner A, you only write down what they tell you unless they need you to help teach them. And then you're going to switch roles. So partner A will go next. You are describing how to do the problem. And partner B is listening to you. Yes? Uh -huh. OK, partner B, take it away. I have a question about this one. All right, thank you, partners, for sharing. We've got all real numbers for both domain and range for B, all real numbers for domain, and then Y greater than or equal to 2 for my parabola. Let's flip it over, okay? So here's the last little tidbit on domain and range. So 
We can ask you for domain and range of lines that are diagonals. We can ask you for domain and range of puppies. We can ask you for domain and range of one-ended inequalities. And we can also ask you for the domain and range of horizontal and vertical lines. So let's make, first make sure we know which direction is horizontal and which one's vertical. Everybody with your hands right now, is horizontal like this or is horizontal like this? <laughs> it's not diagonal. It's either going to be flat or flat. up and down. Here's my question. What does the word horizon mean? It means when you say, I'm going to look at the horizon, what do you do? Do you look up and down or do you look side to side? Side, side to side. So horizontal is side to side. The word vertical, if you play sports, you will take the measurement of your vertical when you just stand up there and you hit a wall. See how high you can jump. So vertical is up and down. Okay, we're talking about side-to-side -side lines. We'll call those horizontal lines. They're going to look something like this. And we're talking about vertical lines, which are straight up and down. These have very interesting domains and ranges. Okay, for horizontal lines, horizontal lines have a domain of all real numbers because they're going to go side-to-side -side everywhere. And they have a range of y equal to just some number. That's horizontal lines. It's just one single number because it's flat. I'll prove this to you in a second. Our vertical lines, okay, so our up and down lines, have a range of all real numbers because it's up and down everywhere, going from the very, very bottom to the very, very top. But its domain is a single number. So it's very interesting for these very particular lines, the ones that are absolutely flat and the ones that are absolutely vertical have very interesting domains and ranges. Let me prove this to you right now. If we look at the horizontal line here, uh, I'm gonna highlight the horizontal line in blue. It's down here. If I asked you to do this the way you think about domain and range, domain is left to right. So Catherine, on this line right here, where does it stop on the left? Does it ever stop? No. No, so it's going all the way to what number, Catherine? Infinity. Cool, and if I go to the right, what's it going to? Infinity. That's all real numbers, y'all. Oh, yeah. That's it. And then if I ask you to find the range, Marissa, this range is going from the bottom to the top of the graph. Does this graph have a bottom? Does it have a lowest that it goes? Like right here, right? That's as low as it goes. And then if I asked you to also find the top, is that also the top of the graph? It only shows up one place, right? So if it's the bottom and the top at the same place, it's just that number. This is the y value of negative 4 right here. So my range is just the number negative 4. Not greater than, not less than. Not greater than or equal to, not less than or equal to, just the number equals 4. Or like it crosses? Where like it crosses, yeah, because that's the level the entire graph is at, so that's its range. With that same idea, Adrian M, let's talk about vertical lines. So Adrian M, here's my vertical line right here. If I'm asking you for the domain, does it extend from left to right? Or doesn't it just have one place where it goes to left to right? Okay, here's what I'm saying. If I look on the left, where is the graph over here? It's just right here, right? If I look on the right side of it, does it show up over there? It's just still that one little spot, right? What value is that, Adrian M? Cool. So our domain is just the number 3, because that's exactly where that vertical line hits my x-axis. It's just 3, because that's right where that vertical line exists on my x-axis. So range is y, domain is x. Correct. Correct. Now, if I'm asking about range for this one, Mark, if you look at this one, range is bottom to top. What's at the bottom of this graph? An arrow that means it goes all the way down to the number negative infinity. Mark, what's at the top of this graph? Another arrow. Another arrow, which means this extends all the way to positive infinity. And if I have double infinities, that's the phrase, all real numbers.
Yes, ma'am. Okay, here we go. We're going to do these three together. Okay, I'm not having you do them uh, by yourself just yet. If I'm asking for the domain of this first graph, first of all, let's make sure we know where our axes are. So this is the x-axis. It's labeled with an x. And this is the y-axis labeled with a y. Is my graph horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. So here's my, oop, that's not a highlighter. Here's my horizontal line. It extends all the way from left to right. So how would I say the domain for something that extends everywhere from left to right? All real numbers. You can write it out or you can write my fun symbol. But this range, it doesn't extend everywhere from bottom to top. Where exactly does it show up? What y value? Two. two. So we would say y is two. That's exactly where it shows up at the y value of two. On the second one, Marissa, is this a vertical or a horizontal line? Very cool. It's a vertical line right here. Since it goes straight up and down, that means it does not go side to side at all. So it has exactly one value from side to side. Class, what is that one value from side to side? One. It's negative one. So we would say the domain is just negative 1. But its range goes everywhere from all the way at the bottom to all the way at the top. How do we say it's everywhere? All real numbers. I'll write it out this time. Sort of. All real numbers. OK, this last one is yours. The third one. I want you and your partner or you to answer it. All right, let's 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 go on this one. So uh, is this one horizontal or vertical? No, no, no. Vertical, vertical. Vertical. Okay, so it's going all the way up and down, which means it only shows up at one x value. What is that x value? Five, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five. Is that positive or negative five? Positive. That's positive five. So my domain is only the number 5. The range is all real numbers because this graph extends from negative infinity to infinity all the way up. All right, the last one is yours. This is what they've asked before on tests, and by they, I mean me. Huh. We've asked before questions like this on tests. This question says, what is the domain and range of f of x equal to 12? Okay, right now, this f of x equal to 12, that's an equation. I need everyone to get out their Desmos, and I need you to graph typing in f of x equal to 12. An equation is going to show up on your screen. I need you to answer this question for me once you see what the graph looks like. Wait, but what? f of x equal to 12. So here's what my graph looked like when I graphed it on Desmos. Is that what yours looked like? Yes. Okay, cool. So is this line horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. We're checking domain. We're going to look from the left to the right. Where does this graph stop on the left? It stops at 12? On the left? What's on the left of this graph? An arrow, which means it goes out. Yarls doesn't have an arrow on Desmos, but if you keep zooming out, it keeps going. It's going to go all the way to what number? Negative. Negative infinity. And then on the right, what is it going to go to? Which means my domain should be what phrase? All real numbers. Okay. It goes from negative infinity to infinity. So let's get rid of answer choices. First one is wrong. The second one is wrong. Third one, that. that's fine. That. Fourth one, that's fine. Okay. Now we have to check the range. Okay, we already know these are out. The range. Where does this graph show up? What is this value? 12. It shows up at 12, right? Does it show up anywhere else? No. no, that's the bottom and the top. It's only at the number 12. That's this right here. Not all real numbers. That's not it. It's just 12. I told you it was D. I told you it was D. Nice. 
okay? Domain and range is complicated, but all we're doing still is telling you where the graph shows up on the left and the right and on the bottom and the top. Sometimes it has endpoints and sometimes it doesn't. You will need to be prepared for all of those scenarios, which does make this a difficult topic, but we're going to practice some more.